Hi, Hugo Reed. I have a book today that's called Classified, The Secret Career of Mary Golda Ross, Cherokee Aerospace Engineer. I think this book is a good one because all of us have some subjects for us that are hard in school. And this talks about, for her, some of the subjects weren't so hard, but it, she talks about how she just kept trying to learn more and more and more. So I think it's a very interesting one. So she is part of the Cherokee Nation of Native Americans. And this book was set a while ago. Let's read. Um, it was written by Tracy Sorrell and illustrated by, by Natasha Donovan. I actually heard of this book first because I was watching some things about this author, Tracy Sorrell. And if you're interested in reading some other books about Native Americans and different nations, she has some really good books out, this author does. She is a Native American herself. Here's a picture of her. And she wrote, We Are Grateful and also Indian No More, which I thought were both really good books. And she is a Cherokee citizen herself, this author is. Hmm, look, it looks like some plans. Aerospace engineer. You see the airplanes in those plans? And then before the book starts, there's a note here. It says, a note on Cherokee values. While a written guidebook on Cherokee values does not exist, important lessons have been taught by Cherokee families to their children across the generations. Mary Golda Ross's parents instilled the tribe's values in their children. Some of the values that shape Mary include gaining skills in all areas of life, both within and without outside the classroom, working cooperatively with others, remaining humble when others recognize your talents, and helping ensure equal education and opportunity for all. There she is. It looks like she's a young, younger girl here. And this is a quote from Mary Golda Ross in 2008, so not so long ago. Do the best you can and search out available knowledge and build on it. I started with a firm foundation in mathematics and qualities that came down to me from my Indian heritage. Young Mary Golda Ross pushed her pencil across the page. Puzzling out math equations made her happy. Teenage girls in the 1920s weren't expected to excel in math or science, but Mary did, and she blazed a trail for others. So 1920s, she lived 100 years ago, right? That's kind of amazing. And there she is in school. In the hills of northeastern Oklahoma, Mary's Cherokee tribe provided education for everyone. Her great-great-grandfather, John Ross, had served as the principal chief of the Cherokee Nation. He helped create a school that later became the State Teachers College, which Mary began attending at the age of 16. So she went to college pretty early if she went when she was 16. Most people go when they're 18. And it must have been a good school because it later became part of the State Teachers College, so it was obviously a good school that her great-great-grandfather helped start. When the boys refused to sit next to the only girl in math class, Mary felt motivated to get better grades than they did. And she didn't stop there. We can always be encouraging to someone who's wherever we are, right? Someone who maybe doesn't feel so comfortable and we could be encouraging. In this case, these boys were not encouraging and they wouldn't sit by her. But she didn't let that discourage her. She just decided to get better grades than they did, right? Holding true to her tribe's belief about gaining life skills in all areas, Mary took advantage of every opportunity to learn. In college, she majored in math, believing the world is so technical, if you plan to work in it, a math background will help you go further and faster. After graduation, Mary taught math and science to high school students. Then, even then, she saw more ways to grow and contribute. So this still would have been probably in the late 1920s, I'm guessing. 
Mary moved to Washington, D.C., where a supervisor at the Bureau of Indian Affairs noticed her talent. She was then hired to be the girls' advisor at the Bureau's co-ed boarding school in Santa Fe, New Mexico. The Cherokee value of instructing in gentle, thoughtful way guided Mary as she encouraged the next generation of Pueblo and Navajo girls to learn and excel. So this is showing how she went from the North Eastern State Teachers College, Colorado State Teachers College, Bureau of Indian Affairs, and Santa Fe Indian School. Mary soon found that others outside the classroom needed her bath and science knowledge too. See the airplanes up there? At the time, only men served as engineers in the large corporation. Oops, did I miss a page? No, I guess not. At the time, only men served as engineers in the large corporation. Mary thought back to when she was the lone girl in her math class. She wasn't intimidated. Intimidated is like scared or concerned, worried. But she knew she needed more training. Mary focused. The company helped her take engineering classes at a nearby university. She had to balance her job duties and homework. Would the men Mary worked with accept her as an equal? So she was working a full-time job and going to school, to college. They did. Mary became Lockheed's first female engineer and helped other women join the field. She modeled the Cherokee value of working together in mind and heart. She shared her knowledge and asked questions to improve designs. Her male colleagues respected her intellect, her drive to solve problems, and how she worked in the team. None of them realized, though, what would come next. Do you see the sketches of the different airplanes here? And this is a tool that's used for measuring when you're drawing technical things. With World War II almost over, the race between the United States and the Soviet Union to reach the outer space sped up. The company selected Mary to be one of 40 engineers in a super secret work team. Mary described their mission as taking the theoretical and making it real. What did that even mean? It meant Mary worked on projects that people had only imagined and some no one had even thought of before. No vessel had ever flown nonstop around the earth with or without a pilot. Flying beyond the earth? That seemed impossible. Determined, she and her colleagues would figure out how to do it. When Mary accepted the invitation to join Lockheed's top secret group known as the Skunk Works Division, she knew most of their work would be classified. A lot of it still is. If work is classified in these kinds of projects, that means it's secret but they don't talk about it and they don't share it. So if it's classified, it's top secret. When Mary appeared on Guess My Job TV show, she surprised the host when her line of work was finally revealed. Even though Mary worked on world-changing projects, she never sought the spotlight. So they would have been very surprised because they didn't know women engineers back then. Along with her colleagues, Mary researched orbiting satellites, like those that monitor weather patterns and send signals to television. She designed concepts for space travel to Venus and Mars. Her critical work on spacecraft later helped the Apollo space program send astronauts to the moon. But what if nobody ever knew her name or recognized her as the most important engineer she was? So it's kind of showing just kind of some thoughts of different things that happened later that built on the things that she had helped discover. That didn't matter to Mary. Her life reflected another Cherokee value, humility. Mary never bragged or drew attention to her skills. Her work, including helping to put a man on the moon, spoke for itself. Whenever Mary received awards, she always thanked her colleagues because she knew that one person, no one person deserved credit for what everyone had done together. So that's humble when you 
aren't bragging about yourself and you're helping other people come up with you. In her quiet, steadfast way, Mary kept right on blazing a trail for others to follow the rest of her life. Although her work was classified, Mary still had much to share. She never stopped recruiting American Indians and young women to study math and science and helping support them to become engineers. Mary's work and her legacy of service has helped many others become trailblazers too. If you're a trailblazer, you're kind of one of the first people who does something. So she was one of the first women engineers, so she was a trailblazer. And then at the end of the book, it gives a timeline. Here's a picture of her, an actual photograph in the, in the mid-1900s. So it would have been around 1950s. And this is when she was quite a bit older and receiving an award. Or actually, I think she's giving an award. She, yeah, she's presenting this other woman an award. And it also says she lived till she was just three months short of her 100th birthday. And she died in 2019, so not that long ago. And there's some more information about bibliography, author's notes, different Cherokee values. So a really interesting book to take a look at if you're interested in checking it out. I was just looking to see if there are any websites listed, but I don't see any. So that is Classified, The Secret Career of Mary Golda Ross. And it's true, she's not someone we really heard about much, so kind of an interesting person to kind of get to know a little bit more. I hope you enjoyed the book. Keep dreaming and keep trying hard things. She did, and look what she accomplished. Amazing things in her life. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.